I was a state math competition champion. I got a perfect score on the ACT and SAT math, both with 10 minutes to spare, and now I'm a private math tutor. Today, we're gonna solve together the first 10 problems of the ACT. For each problem before I give the solution, think about and try to understand what is the question really asking you and then attempt to figure it out. Let's go. The top surface of a rectangular table has an area of 100 square feet and a width of five feet. What is the length in feet of the surface? Pause at this point to try yourself first. I'm going to draw what I would visualize. We have a rectangular table. This whole area is 100 feet squared width of five feet. That means it's just gonna be 100 over five for 20. Problem one is usually the easiest and you can do it in a few seconds just in your head by doing 100 divided by five. A wallet containing two $5 bills Nine $10 bills and five $20 bills is found and returned to its owner. The wallet's owner will reward the finder with one bill drawn randomly from the wallet. What is the probability that the bill drawn will be a $20 bill? Okay, so this is simple probability. That means we need to find the number of $20 bills over the total number of bills. So we have five 20s. And a total of two plus nine plus five bills, which equals 16. So that means we have five twenties over 16 total. And we cannot simplify that further. So it's just gonna be five over 16. In his costume supplies, Elmo the clown has four noses, three pairs of lips and two wigs. A clown costume consists of one nose, one pair of lips and one wig. How many different clown costumes can Elmo make? Okay, so this is combinations. When we have combinations of different things, let's start from a smaller example so we make sure to have the understanding. Say you have two kinds of socks and three kinds of shoes. How many combinations can you make? You're gonna multiply them. So you have six combinations. We also want to understand this with a tree diagram. So this is you waking up in the morning and you have two options for socks, sock one and sock two. Then branching off from here in this decision tree, we have three shoe options. So shoe one, shoe two, shoe three, and same here, one, two, three. That's why in the end we have one, two, three, four, five, six total combinations. That's why you do two times three, and that would be the same thing as if you did three times two, because in your decision tree, you can do starting from the shoes first, and then picking your socks from there. So we need to have a fundamental understanding of how combinations work, even though this problem itself is pretty easy. So in this case, with the four noses, three pairs of lips, two wigs, because we're choosing one of each, so we just directly multiply them. So we get 12 times two, which is 24. Esteban and his family are making care packages to send to children at summer camp. Each complete care package contains five pens, two notebooks, three envelopes, 12 cookies, and five candy bars. Esteban and his family have already made seven complete care packages and the following materials remain. So these are the materials that remain. How many additional complete care packages can Esteban and his family make with the remaining materials? Okay, so we need to take a moment and understand what is happening first. We have Esteban and his family making care packages that have five pens, two notebooks, three envelopes, 12 cookies, and five candy bars. It's written kind of messy, but this is just to keep track of all the things we have. We have some remaining materials and we want to find out the additional care packages to be made. That means we need to find the limiting ingredient or component of these care packages. So how many pens do we have? We have three times 10 equals 30 pens. We have four times five equals 20 notebooks. And we have two times 12 equals 24 envelopes. 
Notice how we need to find the number of these items themselves to find how many packages we can make. We have 84 cookies and we have four and a half times 10 equals 45 candy bars. On the test itself, you would just write next to the work how many you have of each because writing all these words out in this demonstration would take too long. We want to divide each of these by how many of that item we need in each box. So 30 divided by the five is six more care packages if we're only going by the pens. Then going by the notebooks, we can make 10 care packages if we're only going by the notebooks. With envelopes, we can make eight. With cookies, we can make seven. And finally, with candy bars, we can make nine. So the limiting number here is the pens, which means that at most, we can make six care packages. That's because for all the other items here, there's enough inventory to make six care packages, which is limited by the number of pens here. So the answer is six. A formula for the volume of a right circular cone is V equals one third pi R squared H, where, where R is the radius of the base and H is the height of the cone. Using 22 over seven as an approximate value for pi, which of the following values is closest to the volume in cubic inches of a cone with height 28 inches and radius six inches? So overall, when you're reading these questions, it should be probably faster than when I read it out loud because you're just taking in the important information to understand that we have a formula and we're using an approximation. And finally, the goal is to find the volume. We have a cone that we're trying to find the volume of. Volume of. This is 28 inches and radius is six inches. So it's pretty straightforward. We're just going to plug the numbers into the volume formula. Usually you should have these memorized, but in this problem, they gave it to us. So V equals one third pi six squared times 28. And remember that we were given the approximation here. And before you use the calculator, I recommend simplifying it as much as you can so then you have fewer things to type in. I'm gonna cancel these out to get 12. And then I'm gonna cancel this out to get four. So in the end, all I have to type in my calculator is 12 times 22 times four, which equals 1056. Keep in mind that every single problem on this test can be done without a calculator, which is why we wanna get in the habit of doing as much as you can first without it to make the problem easier and then all we use the calculator for is to make it faster. Like here, when I just did 12 times 22 times four to get our final answer. In triangle ACD below, B is on AC, E is on AD. The measure of angle CAD is 28 degrees and AD is perpendicular to both BE and CD. What is the measure of angle CBE? So again, when going through problems like this live, I think that it's, important on the test to speed read. So basically all you're doing is reading the last question. What is the measure of angle C, B, E? Because all the other information they say in the problem is already labeled in the picture they give us. Like they say that this angle is 28 degrees. So you don't need to spend that much time reading it in the problem because it's already labeled. So it asks, what is this measure? And it already has a question mark there in the diagram. Pause and take a moment again, as usual, for solving it yourself. Okay, we want to look at triangle relationships. This is gonna be a right angle, which means that this is going to be 90 degrees minus 28 degrees. Why is that? Because the total angles in a triangle is sum of 180 degrees. So. So when we look at the non-right angles, they're going to add up to 90 degrees since this right angle is 90 degrees itself. These two angles here add up to 90 degrees. So this unknown angle, is going to be 62 degrees. Then we look at another relationship. This is 180 degrees, which means that this question mark angle, angle C, B, E, 
is going to be 180 degrees minus this 62 degrees. And that is 118 degrees. However, the smarter way to solve this would be to recognize that we have actually done a lot of redundant extra effort because at the start, we did 180 degrees minus 90 degrees minus 28 to get the 62 degrees. At the end, we use another 180 degrees. As I explained in the video in the cards, this is why we can directly use the exterior angle formula. So this angle we're trying to find right here is actually going to be the sum of this angle and this angle. So that equals 28 degrees plus 90 degrees, which is 118 right away, faster solution. We want to see these relationships between angles and the numbers you're using such that you can use this exterior angle formula and you don't even have to memorize it. This is explained in the video that I linked in the cards. You can click it and watch it to understand after this video. And this will be also linked in this video's description box. What is the sum of this polynomial and this polynomial? So just like on the test, you probably don't have to read it out loud because that will take too much brain power to say in your head all of these decimals and powers of x. So instead, we're just going to combine the like terms. So for x squared, we know we have 0 0.1 plus 0 0.5. It helps to line it up like this. And then we have 3x and minus 2x. And finally, we have just the constants, which are 80 and 60. So we add like terms. And right away, we get our answer, which is B, 0.6x squared plus x plus 140. Students studying motion observed a cart rolling at a constant rate along a straight line. The table below gives the distance d feet to the cart was from a reference point at one second intervals from t equals zero seconds to t equals five seconds. Which of the following equations represents this relationship between d and t? So like you see in my scratch work here, we want to see what kind of relationship there is with each interval. And you can find this, for example, by finding the difference between each of the output values. The difference here is three, the difference is three here, and the difference continues to be three. That means this is a linear relationship or linear equation. Next, we want to look at the y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept is convenient because that's when t equals zero. Hence, in our linear equation, we have y equals slope of three times x plus our y-intercept of 15. Since our y-intercept is when t, or our independent variable, is zero. Recognize that d and t are just what we know usually as x and y, so your answer is just going to be converting this equation with the problem variables, so it's d equals 3t plus 15. Dimitri bought a pair of pants at the discounted price of $30. The original price of the pants was $40. What was the percent of the discount? Okay, so that's why math is helpful because it relates to real things in life because you want to save money when you buy things. He bought it at $30 and the original price was $40. When you save a percent, that means that you save a certain number from the original price. So how much did he save? He saved $10. We want to talk and understand math problems like these word problems in basic English. So in basic English, we want to think about this logically of how we understand buying things in the real world. If we saved $10 off of $40, that means that this $10 was that percent discount. How do we get the percent? We do 10 over the original price of 40. That is one fourth, and that is 
25%. That means the discount was 25% since we saved 25%, which is $10 to get to $30. Lucky guy Dimitri does not have to pay any tax on those pants he bought. What is the value of absolute value negative six minus absolute value of seven minus 41? Okay, so we have to be careful here. We always want to try and evaluate what's in the absolute value brackets first. So first we have just six because that becomes positive. Next, we want to evaluate what's here. Be careful, that's why I added these parentheses here first. So seven minus 41, that itself is going to be negative 34, but we have absolute value. So that becomes a positive 34. So at the end, we just have six minus 34 and that becomes negative 28. And that's our answer. Great job on those 10 problems. But remember the important thing is being able to solve all 60 problems efficiently and effectively. So make sure to check out my math tricks to save you tons of time on the ACT or SAT. Peace.